Hello, I am Dr. Sridhar. Welcome to my channel. In case you have already subscribed, please support the channel by sharing the videos with your colleagues. And if you have not subscribed, please do subscribe and follow the notifications as well. Any baby on ventilator needs to be monitored and all the NICU babies have a regular monitoring uh, on. So we have oxygenation monitoring with pulse oximetry and the sicker babies we use transcutaneous oxygen where we don't have umbilical lines. Monitoring of gas exchange with the CO2 uh, on the gas and uh, to repeat uh, gases multiple times is a wastage of blood and also resources. So transcutaneous CO2 if available helps us. We have uh, modules on the monitors as well where you have entitled CO2. Though it's not as accurate as the transcutaneous CO2, it would give you a guide. Uh, we have to have a unit a guideline for uh, blood gases uh, timing as well as when we need an umbilical arterial line. Majority of the premature babies, unless they are extreme premature or less than 28 weeks, may not need umbilical arterial line if they are clinically stable. Uh, peripheral arterial lines are quite challenging to maintain. So have a unit policy on when you would consider the umbilical arterial line. Umbilical venous lines are used more in the tiny babies, uh, less than 31 weeks because they need TPN usually from day one till they reach full feeds. Uh, vital signs monitoring which includes the heart rate, respiratory rate, uh, pattern of breathing, temperature including the core peripheral difference as an indication of the uh, perfusion. For example, if the ventilator, uh, the settings are over distending the lung, it might compromise cardiac output and one of the early changes is the core peripheral difference. So alert your team to understanding and also teach the team to look at the pulmonary graphics to detect that before it happens. So this is just to illustrate uh, pulse oximeter as well as uh, in transcutaneous carbon dioxide sensing. Uh, preparedness is key, anticipation, preparedness, and I mentioned about the skill drill as well that you act together in a team when an event happens. So we should have uh, complications, anticipation, so cold light uh, in the unit should be available and readily accessible because air leaks can happen anytime in a ventilated baby, both on invasive and non-invasive ventilation. And with more focus on non-invasive, we are actually seeing a rise in air leaks uh, and it may be even up to 2 to 3 percent in the sicker small babies. In the premature babies, even 20 percent rate of pneumothorax has been described. Uh, we should have the equipment for chest drain, uh, either a pigtail or trocar system, whatever you use, and underwater drain. If you uh, want emergency access and transport, a hemlic valve is handy as well for if you can't take the underwater drain. Uh, we need to have the equipment to needle uh, to remove air, especially the uh, wind flown. I will make a separate video on uh, air leak management and. Uh, your, a stopcock with ventilator when flown is useful. Uh, emergencies may need either uh, accidental extubation, needing reintubation, or a baby collapses and you need to intubate. So keep the laryngoscope CT tube of the right size, uh, stillet if needed, CO2 sensor, fixing devices ready. Uh, if there are self extubations on a recurrent basis in a unit, learn from it, look at what is producing it, and try to fix it. Uh, Pre-medication can take time to prepare and it's always good practice for elective intubations in the NICU to use pre-medication. We could test a system where the pharmacy pre-prepares the medications and we have sealed envelopes, sealed bags kept in the fridge, which you can use, especially if it's a busy unit and you use these frequently. Uh, we should have the options for the less invasive surfactant delivery uh, ready as well. And the video laryngoscope is a very useful tool to have especially if you have a team uh, who is inexperienced in intubation as well. So some of the equipment you need to drain a pneumothorax and the chest x-ray showing a pigtail in the right pneumothorax. Obviously, there is still residual layer, and in these settings, adding a negative suction to the uh, underwater seal system would help to drain the residual layer or pulling back the pigtail could help. So this is the pigtail catheter uh, which will be used to insert. Uh, a rapid response of the radiology team is important. It may be important to discuss with them if there is usually they are covering multiple areas like emergency. We should have a clear uh, indication of when it's urgent. Like if you are suspecting a tension pneumothorax, you should have a special code to call uh, or inform the radiology team that they have to drop everything and run to the NICU. Ultrasound machine in the NICU can help you with focus. Uh, lung ultrasound helps to diagnose pneumothorax fairly quickly by the bedside and uh, train your team in that as well if possible. Uh, 
Uh, APHN can occur in any term baby with acute worsening and uh, that's a separate lecture on its own but uh, be prepared to treat it, uh, escalate the treatment like inhaled nitric oxide. Uh, these are rarely used and so calibration of the equipment, setting it up, the nursing team should upskill themselves regularly on this as well, uh, the entire team in fact. And uh, high frequency ventilation, obviously most of the modern ventilators have high frequency built in and the circuits we use are usually compatible so double check that so if you do switch to high frequency you don't need a change in the circuit. Uh, preparedness to transport so if you have to transfer if you're in a level 2 unit and you need to shift the baby to a level 3 or a surgical center you need to be prepared and uh, organize the transport effectively. Uh, moving on to nutrition obviously Looking after a sick baby is never complete unless you have infection prevention and focus on nutrition. And uh, it's very important component to ensure both short and long term outcomes. Remember that the immune response of the baby, the uh, ability to rebuild or repair tissues and the long term outcome, everything links to adequate protein intake. And growth of course is important as a measure for the parents to focus on and uh, they feel happy when the baby is gaining weight as well. Uh, trophic feeds should be started at the earliest possible, there is a separate video on that and progress with the feeds. Uh, most of these babies are having non-invasive ventilation so they would be on OG feeds. There is a separate lecture on enteric, uh, enteral nutrition that I shared recently as well. Uh, we should have a standardized approach to progressing with feeds and that is one of the most important aspects that helps improve the feeding outcomes of these babies. Most of these babies in such units where standardized feeding protocols are used have less complications, they reach full feed sooner. Uh, significant hypotension or PPHN are relative contraindications but you can still give them trophic feeds and uh, progress at the earliest possible. Uh, central line access uh, is a very important and don't delay starting of TPN. Partial TPN doesn't have much role because the baby needs uh, lipid sparing, uh, pro I mean protein sparing effect from the lipid. So just giving the protein alone is just going to take the proteins to be used for calorie intake and you may feel good that you are giving something but actually for the baby it's not going to be much benefit. So if you do decide that the baby needs TPN, go for full TPN uh, with the central line access as possible. If you are using peripheral TPN, be very careful with the uh, risk of extravasation injury. Uh, moving on to PDA management, obviously uh, though it comes in the management of a sick newborn, it's one of the important aspects which does affect the ventilatory management of the baby. Uh, early screening based approach in my view, similar to what is uh, advocated by Professor Patrick McNamara from Iowa and uh, the team from their unit uh, is important in the tiniest babies. The babies about 27 weeks may not need regular treatment of the PDA and majority of the time with supportive care the PDA may close by itself with time. So about 10 to 15 percent of the bigger premature babies more than 27 weeks may need treatment with paracetamol or ibuprofen. But in the extreme premature babies a higher proportion of them may benefit and timely intervention is important because once the PDA stays open it may not close and uh, we have paracetamol as an option. I know the Benedictus and the early Oscar didn't, uh, baby Oscar trials did not show a benefit for ibuprofen given early. But Paracetamol is uh, probably safer in the first week to 10 days and if you have a first trial or two trials of paracetamol failing then you can go for brufen by which time the renal maturation, the feed tolerance have set in and the risk of complications from the brufen is reduced as well and uh, very rare that we need to send the baby for ligation or uh, non, I mean invasive uh, catheterized uh, procedures to close the PDA. I have not seen any baby needing that in the recent past. Uh, of course, the use of inotropes and appropriate use of fluid management in a sick baby is important and use your functional echo skills to good use. If you have a cardiology backup as well, it would help you a lot. So timely management with inotropes, don't overuse inotropes. They are also medications where the effect cannot be predicted and it might have side effects on the brain perfusion, for example, or gut perfusion. So just use it where it is needed. Uh, try to base it on... Uh, physiologic reasoning and use a functional echo to help you. So just an illustration of a bedside echo showing a large PDA here. Of course, uh, this doesn't mean that you need to treat. You need to get all the measurements and functional quantification to show it's hemodynamically significant. Uh, infection prevention and uh, ventilator associated pneumonia or villi prevention is very important. 
most important aspect of uh, NICU care leading to successful outcomes. All the NICUs agree that if you prevent infection, the course of the baby is going to be very smooth. If you have infection, it's going to be a complicated course. Uh, even the risk of ROP and other complications are high if you have a higher infection rate. Hand hygiene is a key, stress on that. Have a unit quality improvement projects to improve hand hygiene complaints. Ventilator-associated pneumonia can be reduced with VAP bundles uh, and